Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'll be showing you how to rebuild the WP48mm open chamber cartridge style fork with preload adjuster. WP started running the 48 millimeter open chamber cartridge style of fork with spring preload adjuster way back in 2008 and can be found on the KTM 300 XCW along with many other off-road dirt bike models. Now they ran these forks all the way up until 2015 which they were then replaced by the Explore 48 millimeter cartridge fork. Now, if you're curious as to whether or not if you have these forks, you can look at the fork cap and you'll notice that the spring preload adjuster will rotate independently of the fork cap itself. And then we've got several pin holes right here that require a pin spanner type of fork cap wrench in order to disassemble them. So today we're gonna show you how to rebuild and replace the fork seals on these forks that we pulled off of a 2015 KTM 300 XCW. Now to do this job, you're just going to need a few basic hand tools. You will want to have some rags, rubber glove safety glasses, a drain pan, as well as some contact cleaner, a ratio right, and some replacement fork oil. Now the service manual calls for a four weight of fork oil, but you can use any high quality five weight of fork oil. You will want to have some scotch right in case you have to repair the inner tube on your forks, as well as a 48 millimeter fork seal driver, the Tusk pin spanner fork cap wrench, a 48 millimeter fork seal bullet, some grease for your fork seals, some replacement fork seals, and a heat gun. All right, now before you begin rebuilding and replacing the fork seals, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you start out with a clean fork. So before you begin working on it, make sure that they are nice and clean and that you've had a chance to remove any dirt or debris. Next, we need to record the position of our compression and our rebound settings. Now to do this, we're going to be rotating our rebound clicker, which is at the top. We're gonna to count the number of clicks as we turn this clockwise, which will fully seat it. And then once we've recorded that number, we can then rebound or back the adjuster all the way out to the full soft position. And then on the bottom side for our compression, we've got a rubber cap that we will need to remove in order to access the adjuster. But then we will perform the same thing. We will rotate the adjuster clockwise and count the number of clicks until it fully seats. Then we can rotate the adjuster counterclockwise until it is in its full soft position. All right, so next we can place our forks into our vise with soft jaws. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have some soft jaws in there so you don't damage the outer tube on your fork. And then you're gonna clamp it in this location right here. This is gonna be the lower section of where our triple tree clamps onto the fork. Now we need to record our measurement of our preload setting. Now to do this, I'll be using a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with 24 millimeter socket. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and count the number of rotations it takes till it seats, record that number, then I'm going to rebound it or rotate it counterclockwise to the full soft position. Now when I do this, I'm gonna line my wrench up with the bleed screw right here, so that way that's my reference point so I can record my number of turns. So right there looks like we're at about seven, so then we'll now rotate it counterclockwise to the full soft position. Next, we can remove the fork cap with using our pin spanner fork cap wrench from Tusk. Now, as you'll notice on this tool, we've got an opening right here. This recess or opening is gonna compensate for our bleeder valve. Now, before we remove our fork from the vise, it's a good thing to just go ahead and lay out some rags. That way, as we pull the fork apart, we can lay the parts out in the order that they are removed. Then we can remove our fork from the vise we're gonna pull down the outer tube like so, and then we can pull down the spring. So there's clearance for our lock nut, then we're gonna slide on our thin 22 millimeter box open-ended wrench. Then we can hold our wrench in a fixed position. Then we can take our 24 millimeter socket, place it onto the preload adjuster. Then we can remove our fork cap. Now on our fork, we have an aftermarket bearing with two washers, but keep in mind that most of you probably won't have these two washers in a bearing. Then we can remove our wrench, spring spacer, and we can remove our spring and the adjuster rod. Then we can grab our drain pan and begin to drain the fork of its oil. Now as you're draining the fork oil, it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and cycle the dampening rod several strokes. That way we can bleed the fork of all the oil. Now you'll notice these spring seats, these do not come off of the damper rod in this direction, so just don't worry about trying to remove them. Next we can place the base of the fork into our vise with soft jaws. Next, we can remove the compression dampening fitting that's in the bottom of the fork. For this, we're gonna be using a 19 millimeter socket with three eighths inch drive ratchet. Now, if the compression dampening fitting just starts spinning around inside of the fork and you're not really getting anywhere, you can use an air impact wrench to remove it. 
All right, so once we've got that backed out all the way, we can push on the dampening rod assembly. It's gonna kind of pop the bolt out just enough so that we can grab it and then work it out of the bottom of the fork tube. Now, before we pull the cartridge out from the fork, I'm going to bring my drain pan up to the table, pull the cartridge out, and I'm gonna cycle it a few times to make sure that I have removed all of the oil. Then we can take our flathead screwdriver we're going to place it in between the outer tube and the dust seal. And then we can wedge the dust seal from the fork tube. Then we can take our pick tool. We're gonna to reach inside of here and then begin to work the snap ring out. Now be careful with this. Take your time if you have to. You don't want to cause any damage to the inner tube. Now once we've gotten to this point, we then need to heat this area of our fork tube we need to heat it to about 50 degrees Celsius or about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we can use a slide hammer-like motion and separate the two fork tubes from each other. All right, and once we've got those two halves separated from each other, we can then we remove our guide bushings. So we're gonna start by removing the upper guide bushing. We're gonna place our flathead screwdriver into the opening here, twist our screwdriver like so, and then we can remove the guide bushing. We can remove the lower guide bushing, followed by our support ring, or stopper ring, the oil seal, snap ring, and then our dust seal. Once we've got those removed from the fork tube, we can give this a really good thorough cleaning with some contact cleaner, and then we're gonna wanna inspect the inner tube itself here for any types of damage, which would include sharp edges, nicks, or any kind of dents. If you have any of those present on your fork tube, you're gonna to wanna to take some Scotch-Brite or some emery cloth and buff out that area until it will no longer catch your fingernail as you run it along the length of the fork tube. All right, now while you're cleaning and inspecting all of your parts, something that you wanna pay close attention to are your guide bushings. Now on the guide bushings, the inner guide bushing for instance, this is gonna have a Teflon coating on the outer diameter and it will not have Teflon on the inner diameter. Whereas the outer guide bushing is going to have Teflon on the inner diameter, whereas no Teflon coating on the outer diameter. Now when you're inspecting these, you want to be looking for any type of excessive wear to where you can see the actual metal from the bushing shining through to the other side. You'll also want to look for any type of metal deposits or anything that's embedding itself inside of the Teflon. If you have any of that present on your guide bushings, you will definitely want to replace them before assembling your suspension. All right, now once we've got all of our parts cleaned and inspected, we can mount this back into our vise with soft jaws and we can begin the assembly. Next, we can take our fork seal bullet and we're going to place this over where the inner guide bushing resides. Now, what this is going to do is it will protect the lips of our seals during the installation so they don't get damaged. Next, we can install the dust seal and before we do so, we're going to use some fork seal grease. We're gonna coat the inner diameter of it and then we can install it onto the fork tube. Then we can install the snap ring. Now, before you install your new oil seal, you wanna make sure that you understand its direction of orientation. Now, the side that's gonna be facing down towards the dirt or down towards the tire is just gonna have a flat finish to it with some stamping and maybe some insignia. Then the side that's gonna be facing the oil is gonna have this recess right here. And inside of it, you're gonna see a metal spring ring or that metal band. Now, this side again is gonna be facing the oil. Now before we install this, we need to grease it up with some fork seal grease. Then we can install it onto the fork tube. Then lastly, we can install our support ring or stopper ring. Then we can remove our seal bullet. Then we can slide on our outer guide bushing. Next, we can install the inner tube's guide bushing. We're just gonna open it a little bit, slide it onto the tube and make sure that it seats in its ring landing. Then we can slide it into the outer tube like this. Now, just before we drive our fork seals into the outer fork tube, we're gonna heat this area of the outer fork tube with our heat gun to approximately 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we're gonna invert the forks. As you can see, our guide bushing has fallen into position along with our stopper ring or support ring, we're gonna pull our oil seal down. Just before we get it seated inside of there, just take a little bit of fork seal grease. We're just gonna coat the outer side of it lightly. Then we can set it into position. We'll take our 48 millimeter fork seal driver. Then we're going to drive the seal into its seated position. Now I'm not sure if you heard that or not, but there was a change in pitch. That lets us know that the seal has been fully driven into its seat. 
Now, once you've driven it home, you want to look inside of there to make sure that you can see the snap rings ring landing to make sure that the oil seal is clearing it so when we go to install this, it's going to fit perfectly. And then we can install our snap ring. Now, I've used a pick tool to get this seated inside of there. Sometimes you can use your fork seal driver, at least half of it. Once you get it started, you can get it set into position like that. Now, once you've got that set in there, give it a good inspection to make sure that it's fully seated into its ring landing so that it's not going to go anywhere. And once that's looking like it's in good shape, we can slide down our dust seal. And just using our fingertips, we can get it set. Then we can place it back into our vise with soft jaws. Next, we can take the dampening rod and we're going to place it into our fork tube. And once you've got the seated inside of there, you're going to want to reach up into the base of it and make sure that the base of our cartridge is fully seated in its position. Then we can install our compression dampener assembly into the base of the fork. And I'd recommend that when you're installing that to be pressing onto the cartridge, pushing it into the fork as you are pressing the dampening assembly into the base of the fork. Then we're going to take our 19 millimeter socket with 3 8 inch driver. Now when you're tightening this bolt, you're going to want to tighten it down to 25.8 foot pounds. Now if you're having some troubles getting the threads to take essentially to the cartridge, it's just spinning around inside of there, you can use an impact air gun in order to get that seated. And then you will want to follow up with a torque wrench to make sure that you are at 25.8 foot pounds. Then we can insert our adjuster rod. Now you want to press on this with your finger, make sure that it's fully seated inside of there. There is a spring inside that will push back up against it, just make sure that that's working. Now we really don't want this to protrude any more than seven millimeters. And then we're going to take the fluid barrier or the lock nut, and we're going to thread this on all the way onto the dampener rod till it lightly seats. Next, we can fill our ratio right with 21.13 fluid ounces of fork oil. Now when it comes to you and your suspension, always be sure to reference your service manual for that specific spec. Now once we've added our fork fluid, we need to cycle the dampening rod shaft several times so that way we can bleed it free of any air. Next, we can install the spring. So now that we've got our spring installed, you're going to want to make sure that the dampening rod is accessible so that you can grab it with your other fingers. And then we're going to install the spring spacer and we're going to pull this down far enough so that we can insert our 22 millimeter wrench. Then we can install the aftermarket bearing and washers followed by our fork cap. All right, now once you've threaded the fork cap on, it's going to stop and lightly seat itself onto the dampening rod. Now, once you've reached this point, we're going to hold this in a fixed position. Then we will bring the lock nut adjuster all the way up to the fork cap. And then we'll take our 24 millimeter socket. We're gonna place it onto the preload adjuster because that's what this is bolting directly to basically. And then we will torque it to 18.4 foot pounds. Then we can pull the spring down, remove our wrench. Then we can slide the outer fork tube up to greet the fork cap. We're gonna thread this on into place and then we will torque it with our pin spanner wrench to 36.9 foot pounds. All right, now once we've got that torque down to spec, we need to set our spring preload adjuster back to its original position that we recorded earlier, as well as our rebound clickers and our compression clickers. Then we can reinstall the rubber plug that goes into the base of the fork. And the last step would be to repeat the same process on the other fork leg. And that's it. That's really all there is to it when it comes to rebuilding the WP 48 millimeter open cartridge style of fork with spring preload adjuster. Now, if you have any questions as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave us a comment below and we can get an answer back to you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how to's, and top fives. Thanks for watching. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Keep the wrenches turning.